Hello, welcome to our next uh, uh, lecture series on big data analytics. So today uh, we will be uh, covering a very important concept uh, with respect to the examination that is uh, uh, anatomy or the data flow, how the, uh, how the data flows uh, related to the reading a file or writing a file in our HDFS <laughs> file system. So in the previous uh, uh, session, so we have discussed uh, about the Java interface and we have seen a simple programs, how the uh, we are going to read a file and how you are going to write a file in an HDFS uh, file system. So we have seen so many of classes and objects. So it looks very uh, complicated at the initial level, but once you are well versed with the Java and how you are going to read the file uh, uh, in respect with respect to the Java programming language and uh, using all the the normal Java Ego classes. Similar to that, we have the uh, various uh, distributed file system or the file system API which the Hadoop supports. So through that, you are you are going to access or read a file or write a file or do certain basic. Uh, file system operations etc so which we have discussed in on the previous session so now in this session so we are going to cover two important uh, concept that is how you are going to read a file from hdfs and how you are going to write a file into the hdfs so logically how the data flows so those things we are going to discuss in today's concept now let us start with the, the anatomy of uh, reading a file so now we are going to read a file so before uh, going into that so let us uh, uh, remember that now in the previous sessions uh, especially when we discussed the hadoop uh, uh, architecture now we said that in an in an hadoop architecture the name node is a master node now it is a one node which keeps the metadata so name node is not going to store any data so where does the data is present uh, where is our file of any client it is present in the data node so we have got data node and we have got name node so these are the two important uh, uh, demons which we have discussed when we uh, when we are uh, dealing with the Hadoop architecture so now here a if you want to read a file from our HDFS uh, uh, file system the client has to interact with the name node. so first what ask what the client is doing now client is going to interact with the the name node and what does the name node tells to the client? So the name node will provide the address of the slaves. That means uh, the name node gives the complete detail about what is that the particular file which the client wants to read. So in which machines it is there. So in that uh, uh, HDFS architecture, we have um, in the cluster we have mentioned that we have got. 10 data nodes right so now the when a client comes to the name node and say that hey name node i want to read this particular file right now what does the name node does name node has got all the metadata information now he has got all the information about this one particular file and you know that hdfs is a distributed environment so the file the, the file which the client wants to read it is not present in one machine so it is distributed among the uh, various machines Right? So the name node will give the client, okay, one block of data related to your file is present in data node 1. The second block of data is present in data node uh, 10. The third block of data is present in data node 3. So like this, he gives uh, address of all the name nodes, how many blocks, where it is stored, all those things is uh, given by the name node to the client. So once this information client gets, now what does the client does? Now he takes this information, he gets the address, right? Where, where is his files are available. Now the client directly interacts with our data node. Right, and the main important thing in HDFS is that the, uh, the read operation as well as the write operation is being done in parallel. So in order to overcome the, the bandwidth issues and all those things, so everything is done parallel. Now you, you have to imagine that now this is not the, not only the one client, there might be so many clients where requests are coming. So uh, the name node is going to serve all the client, right? So there might be another client, he, he also wants to read some data. So like this, there is all the read operations happens in a parallel. Now let us look into the, uh, the block diagram. Now this is the block diagram. Now, 
first don't go with respect to all those things so like one two three steps what are there so the each steps we will be discussing in detail shortly so first just look look here we have got a client machine now this is our client machine right now inside the client machine java client jvm that is java virtual machine in this the machine so we'll just assume that right now you don't go into this open and all those things uh, briefly we'll try to understand how it happens now client wants to read some file he wants to read a file now where is this file file is present in hdfs cluster here as a simple example only three data nodes are taken there may be n number of data nodes present in our hdfs cluster so the file what the client wants to read now it is present somewhere we don't know where the it is there now the client what does he does first he interacts with the name node so he goes to the name node and uh, he wants to read one particular file what is that file name and all the details uh, the name node uh, he client tries to give to the name node now the name node is going to give back the client which all the data nodes the file is there right now before the name node gives those addresses of the day the slave machines or the data node where the file is there he does authentication so we said that security also is taken to a very good level in hdfs but there is an authentication name node does not simply gives the address of this data to the client until and unless he authenticates that this this is the same client and the what file he is going to ask this file relates to that particular client only so after checking all those things authentication process all those things happens we are not going to discuss that here so in the configuration level all those things happens now then the name node gives the uh, addresses right addresses of the uh, data node where the file is required so once the client gets the address of the data node now he goes and contacts this data node directly so he goes and contact the data node directly and parallelly the reading happens so he reads all the blocks of that particular data so this is how it happens now we will go into the in 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 more depth and we'll try to analyze that now how this distributed now when you look in this diagram in client jvm now there are three important uh, things comes here one is hdfs client we are having the second one is distributed file system here we have got fs data input stream right the fs data input stream is there you have to remember this so we have got distributed file system you have got fs data input stream right so we'll we'll try to see how the things happens now of course now these are the same the headings what is present in that diagram so first one was hdfs client and you know that what is the meaning of hdfs client now this is the hdfs is the client or a machine now which wants to read the data so it interacts with the name node and the data node and gets the uh they did just now what we have discussed so now hdfs client now it established a communication with the, our hdfs through file system api <coughs> we have got the file system api through which is going to interface with the name node as well as the the data node and what is the name node again this is the same thing uh, information is present here name node is the master node it keeps the uh, metadata information because uh, the name node does not keeps the actual file actual file is present in the data node name node only stores the metadata information what is the file name how many blocks are there for that particular file and each block is present in which data node all those information is been kept by the name node and what is the data node data node is the actual machines where your uh, file is been present right this is the where your file is been present and you, we have already know that we have stated that data nodes gives periodic heartbeat signals to the master node so through the name node will come to know that the data node is working or not whether it is alive or dead with the help of the heartbeat signal every 3 seconds all the data nodes keeps on giving the heartbeat signal and even uh, when we go into the uh, this things uh, anatomy we talk of another word called as the packet now packet is nothing but a block right so we have got the blocks are there so all the data are stored in terms of blocks in our hd fs so now we will try to look into the the each steps or we will try to look into the how uh, we are going to process the the entire or initiate our file operation now as we have stated that 
what is the first step the first what does the client does so he he wants to read the the data now whatever the that is the file he wants to read now he opens a method by our calling a, a method called as open so first the client opens the or he calls a method called as open on the file system object so he calls a method open on the file system object now which uh, for hdfs now it is an instance of a distributed file system and in our in our client uh, hdfs client we have seen two blocks uh, two names one was the distributed file system and the other one of the fs data input stream right so first client calls the open so which is an instance of a distributed file system next now distributed file system now it calls the name node using a remote procedure call right it it calls the name node using a remote procedure call so that it can get the the address of the file now if you go back to here now here you can see the first point open so client calls a method open which is an instance of a distributed file system now this distributed file system again sends an rpc remote procedure call to the name node saying that to get the block location or you can say the address of that particular file right so distributed file system it calls the name node using rpc to get the location of the the first few blocks of our file now <coughs> for each block the name node returns the address of the data node so it, it is going to give you the address of the data node in which the file is been present so next what happens now the distributed file system it returns an fs data input stream to the client so that the client can read so now the client has the address right now the client has got so his particular data is present in which particular data node or the block of uh, related to that file it is present in which data node the client is having now what does the data input stream does now it returns an fs data input stream to the client and this fs data input stream it in turn wraps up with the dfs input stream so it wraps with the dfs input stream so which actually has got the read command right so now client calls the read client calls the method read on the this particular dfs input stream now from there now he directly goes to the client so he goes to the first uh, block where the data node is been present so he, he goes to the first block and the address is known to the client that it, it, the first block is present in which data node it might be in data node 1 or data node 4 or data node 5 the details is given by the client node so it goes to that particular data node and the <coughs> by using read command or by using this method called as read now the data is streamed from the data node back to the client so the data comes from the uh, data node to the client repeatedly all the blocks are been read now when the end of the block is been reached so once that entire block is been read from data node to the our uh, client our client has finished the entire reading of that node so dfs input stream will close the connection to the data node so it has opened the connection you know that how the file reading uh, happens in a, uh, in java right first open the connection start reading byte wise you have seen in the previous session the coding start reading it in the byte wise so once the end of the block finishes so now dfs input stream will be closed so if the data node is been closed so now in this process of reading or say for example now the client goes to one particular data node because the address is given by the name node saying that so in this particular data node let us say data node 5 so data node 5 a one block is there now the client goes to approach the data node 5 but when he when he applies that read method if that data node 5 is not working if it is not responding right there might be errors right so if the dfs input stream encounters an error while communicating with a data node now what it does it will try to get to the nearest block or we can say that now this uh, once it is not communicating now the client will again contact the 
name node and by that time name node also will come to know that this data node 5 is not working because it has uh, every data node has to send a heartbeat signal every three seconds so name node comes to know that oh this data node 5 so where uh, in this particular client for for like this client i have given the address now the their particular data node is not working so now immediately what the name node does is that it will go to the another copy so the in that machine data node 5 which copy was which block was present which the client requires now he he knows that there is the replication factor of three we know that in hdfs a duplicate another two copies are been made and it is kept in some other node so now immediately name node will take the address of that particular data node where another copy of the is present and it sends that to the client so that the client is now instead of data node 5 he may go to the data node 10 where the another copy of that data is been present so like this so now the uh, the uh, the read operation happens now even the dfs input stream also it verifies the checksums the uh, as we told the uh, authentication and the security aspect even we can the dfs input streams also it verifies the checksums now why this checksums are very important is that now it where it identifies the the data which is been read from the data node the client can uh, verify that the data node is authenticated or we can say the uh, the data node has not been corrupted in between the blocks are not corrupted right uh, the blocks are intact so it is not been corrupted intake uh, corrupted the data is proper so that can be achieved by verifying the checksums with the help of the checksums now easily the uh, the client can come to know that the the data what it has been reading it is properly intake right so one important design or the aspect as we have said is that uh, when we are reading this is how the reading happens I think it is very clear right so from the client he opens a connection with the distributed file system then the distributed file system uses an rpc context the name node name node will give back to the client the address of the data node where the blocks are present so then the data distributed file system it uses fsi input stream so from there call a method called as read client directly goes to the data node he starts reading the blog once the blog of uh, complete blog is completed the file uh, input stream is been closed so this is how the reading happened and all this many times as we said that the reading can happen concurrently or parallelly so the hdfs is designed in such a way that you can have concurrent reading at a time so you can try to read the the blocks one after the uh, so such that the reading will be very uh, fast and all these things are been taken care by the data node not by the name node because name node is the master node it keeps only the the meta data so the data that is traffic also we can manage a lot of uh, traffic uh, <coughs> because uh, when you are talking of huge amount of data now if you are not reading parallelly so then it takes a lot of time to read our data from the distributed environment so this is how the first concept that is reading a file so now we'll go to the writing a file right now we are we want to write a file now again when you want to write a file now there are some important points now you want to write a file into hdfs so again before you start writing a file into hdfs the first thing what the client has to do is he has to interact with the name node and name node provides the address of the data node so the name node will be having whenever every time when the data nodes are giving the block reports from that block reports the name node will come to know that which data node uh, in which particular data node space is available how much space is available how many blocks of space is available so with that what does the name node does is that when a client requests that i want to write one particular file into into the hdfs the name node will give the address on of those data nodes where the memory is available right now as soon as uh, uh, the client gets that address he starts writing the the data into that particular data node now as soon the client finishes writing the uh, blocks of data into the uh, 
uh, uh, one particular data node now what does the uh, the uh, that particular data node does one block it has got now it writes that in its machine and it copies that particular block to it transcends that block to some other data node so this we have discussed in the architecture of uh, hdfs in the um, uh, previous session right because we know that uh, three copies by default replication factor in hdfs is three so every block of data pieces of information three copies are been meant are been made by the hdf so as soon as one block of data is written let us say for example now one block of data has been written by the data node one now what does the data node one does it writes it in its machine then makes one copy of that block and it sends that block to data node five now what the data node 5 does is that now it writes that block in its machine and send, makes another copy and it sends it into data node 7 so now what happened that one block of information now is present in data node 1 it is present in data node 3 it is present in data node 7 the same piece of information three replicas are been done so by default replication factor has been three has been completed so once the data node 7 writes all its data all the information of the data it gives an acknowledgement to data node 5 saying that i have written or i have copied the block of data which you have sent to me so now what this data node 5 does is it sends a acknowledgement to data node 1 saying that date i data node 5 have copied one block of information and data node 7 also has copied the same block of information it sends to data node 1 now the data node 1 it sends that information to the name node now name node will come to know that this one block of information is present in data node 1 it is present in data node 5 as well as data node seven so like this acknowledgement once all these things are completed uh, the replication factor is completed again the acknowledgement goes to the client also saying that now your pieces of information is being returned this is how the process happens and again authentication also in the same process happens like how we have read in the uh, read operation now this is the block diagram so this uh, both the anatomy of read and write is very important with respect to the examination point of uh, right so now this is the anatomy of the block diagram of a writing a file to a hdfs now what we have got a client it wants to write some file into this hdfs now how it writes so it goes directly it contacts the name node right so why are this distributed file system now here also we have distributed file system you have got fs data output stream because you are writing when we want to read here we are having a class what was that class fs data data input stream so fs data input stream is used for reading a file fs data output stream is used for the class is used for writing a file so this distributed file system are through rpc contacts the name node right and it checks that so now the client wants to write one file now the name node will see in its metadata that now whether that particular file is already present or not there should not be any duplication right so it will check that okay this file is uh, 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 it's a new file this particular file is not present in our entire hdfs if everything uh, those setup has been completed so then the name node will see in its uh, metadata how many which all the data nodes are having memory what is the size of the file this particular uh, client wants to write all those calculations have been done and the split up has been done and the name node will give the address to the client okay you can go and write your data in this particular data node so nearest nearest data node it gives now the client directly goes to this particular the data node and he writes one packet he writes a, a packet of information that means one block of information is written yeah now what this data node does is that now it writes it in its machine and make one copy and it sends to some other machine whichever data node is having this space now what this machine does is that now it writes in its machine make one duplicate copy send it to some other machine so now by this time three copies have been 
created so once that replication factor 3 has been reached so now this sends an acknowledgement to this that i have stored one copy now this data node sends an acknowledgement to this uh, to this uh, data node saying that i have kept one copy and this particular data node also has kept so now this acknowledgement goes to the fs data output stream this is how it happens so now here we have seen that we have got create uh, write right all those things will be discussing now first step what happens is the create you want to create a file you want to write a file before you want to write a file you have to open you have to create a file so before client starts writing data to hdfs now it uses an instance of an object of distributed file system by calling or the method called as create so it uses the create now the distributed file system object now it ha does a rpc call to a name node to create a new file in your file system namespace first it creates a uh, uh, new file system namespace right now no blocks are been allotted now name node now it performs some very very important operations now what are that important operation first now client has required permission to create a file or not that is authentication right one way of so what does the name node checks now it checks that okay whether this this um, uh, client does he has got a permission to write the file if he send if he has got a permission so next what it does now it checks that whether that file already exists or not if the file already exists it throws an io exception to the client so if the file is not existing now it creates a new file in the file system so once the file has been registered with the name node that is in the meta data when it registers a new file name so then the client will get an object via the fs data output stream so now he gets an object via the data output stream now which in turn this data output stream which in turn it embeds a dfs output stream object for the client to start writing the data now it starts writing the data so now the dfs output stream now it handles the communication with the data node as well as the name node right so it, it is going to get uh, uh, the communication from both the data node and the name node so now the client now writes the data by using the dfs output stream now what does this dfs output stream does is it splits it into packets so now the client wants to write one file now the dfs output stream it splits up into packet of 128 mb 128 mb and it writes it into the one internal queue now there is a data queue which is been maintained so it starts writing it into one in a queue so in this queue let us say for example already we have discussed now if, if, if one file based on the file size if it is divided into three blocks of data of 128 mb now first one block is been copied written into one data node so then the replication factor happens so once that block is completed second block from the queue is been taken and again three places it has been sent like this it happens so this data queue is then now it is consumed by the data streamer process now which is responsible for asking name node to allocate new blocks now what happens is that when when a queue is maintained and what we calling internal queue or the data queue now it helps in the replication factor how it how it has satisfied all the three replication factor and the acknowledgement it has to get once one block is been written and its replication factor is been done so it takes the second block uh, block of the data from the queue so now all these things are been taken care of with the data streamer process now which is responsible for asking name node so once it is been completed again now the data streamer it will ask the name node that so one block is over now we have another block now where to write this block right in which data node to be replicated now all these things have been taken care and the process we call it as a data streamer so the next is the list of data nodes now from that queue or the pipeline now from there so one by one 
uh, we say that the block has been written and the replication factor has been um, dealt properly and all the task has been completed so the data streamer it streams the packet to the first data node in the pipeline whichever data node is very uh, closer for the uh, the client machine and it also takes care of the rack awareness we have even seen that a very important uh, uh, feature of the uh, rack awareness and also now all these things are taken care and properly acknowledgement is been passed from one data node to the another data node and finally uh, the acknowledgement reaches the, the data input stream and from there it reaches the client saying that your entire file has been written so this is how the entire anatomy of a data uh, write happens as well as the read happens so these things we have discussed in today's class so we have just uh, understand the how the logically how the file is been sent into the hdfs for writing for re, um, for writing and how we are going to get it get the file from hdfs that is the read operation so in the next class now we will be looking into the some other uh, concept like coherent model are there and uh, the remaining concept uh, uh, will be uh, discussing it in our next class and uh, we will be trying to wind up uh, this complete fourth module in our next class so thank you uh, very much so again if you have got any doubts or a query uh, you can send a message uh, in the